So I just watched Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Physics and what? So I just watched Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and uh, Marvel, what's going on here? You know what? I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk to the reason I was even semi-excited about this movie, Jonathan Majors. I like to consider me and Jonathan Majors brothers because uh, we share the same name and he is just lighting it up in this movie. He is Cook it. I mean, there was like multiple times in the movie where I was like, now this. This is the guy. And this is like the main positive thing I can say about Quantumania is Jonathan Majors as the main villain as Kang. And like, I really don't care that it's like setting up everything. He's the new big bad. The fact that he is the new big bad, that makes me excited because what you see from him in this movie, I mean, he is really going for it. I don't exactly like when people are like, why is X actor going so hard in X movie? I mean, sometimes I might think that, but also like they're probably being paid millions of dollars. So like, it's okay to try. But this one, this one, I'm like, Jesus, Jonathan Majors is putting in work. And the fact that he is putting in so much work, it makes the rest of the movie just look even worse to be honest he is so like goddamn committed in this role and he's just like a fantastic actor and i felt like he i'm sorry but he was like the one person who was like i'm putting my whole ass into this movie right now because it really does look like an nba player playing against the jv team and listen i don't like saying that because i think this cast is is good like i like the cast i love paul rudd michelle pfeiffer Michael Douglas. I like these people in here, but I mean, I don't even know how to compare it because Jonathan Majors is blowing them off the screen. I was like, dude, this is almost embarrassing. And this is no spoilers, obviously, but there's a fight scene between him and Ant-Man, as one would expect, and part of his suit rips by his shoulder here. And it's like a quick shot, and you just see Jonathan Majors arm his bicep and his tricep, and I saw that and I was like, Oh, nah, this whole world finna die. <laughs> I was like, uh, yo, we're done. We're cooked. We're cooked. Just let him win. Just let him win so you don't have to take this ass whooping you're about to get here. I mean, he truly is, like, insanely charismatic. And I don't know how Marvel keeps getting these stars, like, right on the brink of explosion. Here. Because Jonathan Majors is gonna have one hell of a year. He's in Creed 3 as the main villain. That sounds weird to say, as the main antagonist in Creed 3, which I am seeing very soon. I cannot wait for that. And I saw him in Magazine Dreams, his kind of awards play from Sundance, where that might be the best performance I've seen in a couple years. So Marvel snatched him up like at a really good time, and it is pretty exciting for what he'll do next. I, I will have to say that. I'm excited to see where Kang comes next. Because outside of Kang the Conqueror and Jonathan, my brother Majors, this movie was just a stale piece of ham. I already kind of touched on the performances outside of Jonathan Majors. I'm sorry, I don't like to get on actors, and maybe it's not their fault, but like, I just was like, geez, are they, can we put in some, some effort here a little bit or something? What's going on? The script is like, okay i mean it's a pretty formulaic marvel movie and listen for those who don't know like i am a fan i consider myself a fan of marvel and the mcu there's been multiple good movies here but this one it was just kind of like okay like almost you talked to chat gpt and it was like give me a marvel script and then boom there it came and the second act is like a huge exposition dumpy i mean there is a lot of exposition that they got to go through specifically with michelle pfeiffer and listen like i said i am a fan of marvel I am. I consider myself a fan. I actually think I've defended them more than they probably need to. I don't think phase four is like the worst phase in Marvel. I really don't. I thought Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was awesome. I thought Black Panther Wakanda Forever was very good upon second watch. I didn't hate my life watching Thor Love and Thunder. I don't wake up each morning and think what Marvel movie am I going to dunk on today? I'm not like that person. On the other side, I'm not that person who's like, you know, actually Thor the Dark World is a very underrated masterpiece. I'm also not that person either. But I've been saying for a long time that the superhero fatigue is absolutely real and it's not just marvel it's other properties as well when you combine all the tv shows and like three movies a year it really does start to just blend together and get too much man you know those tweets you'll see on twitter where someone will you know screenshot like a fight or a poor visual effect or like an obvious green screen from marvel and absolutely dunk on it even if i might agree with that tweet I can usually give them a pass, right? Usually, as long as the movie is like entertaining enough and the characters are charming enough to pull me through it, I can give it a pass. You know, I don't expect Avatar The Way of Water visual effects for every movie. Not every movie can be pumped out after 12 years of waiting. You know, like, I don't expect that. But with the overflowing content that we've been getting, I mean, this movie is like, I think it's starting to break me a little bit because this movie 
is kind of ugly, <laughs> which sucks. Like theoretically, the quantum realm can be like very visually appealing. And Marvel's done stuff like this where the, a lot of the surroundings are CGI. I mean, just look at the first Doctor Strange. And it's not on the visual effects. It's just the amount that they have to keep up with to pump it out. I mean, goddamn. I could really just cry right now thinking about when Marvel used to just give us one or two movies a year and no shows. And that's it. Every movie felt big and impactful. And now I'm just going on a rant. Now, listen, with most Marvel movies, like, I, I don't really get bored, you know? Like, is this movie boring? No. Did I look at my watch the whole time? No. Is it entertaining enough? Sure. If my friends really wanted to watch it, would I go with them if they asked? Yeah, I would. And as I've always said, that counts as something to me. That means a great deal. The fact that I'm at least not bored. But I think that kind of speaks to where we are with Marvel as that is the bar we're setting is, am I bored? No, then I guess it's okay. But for me, really, Jonathan Majors is like the main true positive I can give it. The humor was not it for me either. A lot of this just felt like sleepwalking to the next Avengers movie. And Man of the Wasp Quantumania. Two and a half stars. Now listen, I fully expect Guardians 3 to just absolutely bend me over and spank me. You know, I fully expect that. And that's when I'll be back. But until then, Marvel will have to hold the L for a little bit. And there wasn't a lot of ants. Not as much ants as you expect in an Ant-Man movie. I want my goddamn ants.